Hi, you're watching Saturday in the Woodworking Shop with Andrew Pitts, where we talk things woodworking. I got an email from Adrian asking a question about bandsaw blade speed versus the speed of the motor and the speed of the pulleys. So I thought, hey, let's talk a little bit about the bandsaw. My bandsaw is a, a Delta 14 inch with the riser block. I've had this thing for, for many, many years. It served me well. And uh, 14 inch top wheel, 14 inch bottom wheel. Now let's go around to the drive end. Okay, when I bought my saw, I bought the uh, motor separately. I put a six inch pulley driving the bottom wheel and I put a three inch pulley down on my motor using double uh, belts just to make sure I didn't have any slip. Now the motor nameplate itself, which I hope you can see, it's a 1725 RPM motor. So, how do you make sense out of all this, you know, top wheel, bottom wheel, pulley size, motor speed. Well, I made up a little drawing of my bandsaw. Hope you can see that. It's a 14 inch bandsaw, so nominally the top wheel and the bottom wheel are 14 inch in diameter. They're not exactly, but that's, that's pretty close. Here we have the pulley that's driving the bottom wheel, and it actually measures 6.2 inches from where the actual belt sits on the pulley. I measured from outside a belt to outside a belt. Did the same thing in the bottom pulley on the motor and it measured 2.8 inches. So I'm using those numbers to give us a little more exact calculation. Now I know that if the bottom wheel turns one full time that the bandsaw blade is going to be pulled around that distance. So all I got to do is figure out that distance and how fast that's turning and we'll have our answer in feet per minute of bandsaw blade travel. The way to do that is to use a ratio of the motor pulley to the drive wheel pulley. The motor pulley is going to turn a little over two times for every turn of the drive wheel pulley. So if I run that ratio 2.8 inches over 6.2 inches and multiply that times the, the motor's no load speed you end up with 779 RPM for the bottom wheel on the bandsaw. Now, to figure out the circum circumference of the bottom wheel, you can do two things. You can take a tape measure, and I actually did that on my wheel. I came up with about 3.62 uh, feet, or you can do the math. You can say it's the diameter is 14 inches, the diameter times pi, which is that number 3.1416 that tells you how many times a diameter can go around a circumference. If you run that math, 14 inch wheel divided by 12 inches for feet, so I can convert all these to, to feet, times pi equals 3.67 feet. So that's pretty close to what I actually measured. So the blade speed is going to be that wheel circumference times the wheel speed, or 3.67 feet per revolution of the wheel, times 779 revolutions per minute, works out to 28.59 feet per minute of blade speed, and that's in the no load condition. That actually corresponds pretty well to the recommended maximum uh, blade speed for cutting wood, which is about 3,000. Uh, some folks, you know, think you should do a little lower uh, if you're resawing. Uh, but, you know, if you're not wanting to change your blade speed all the time by changing pulleys around, then uh, having a, a top pulley that's, a, you know, six inches and a bottom pulley that's a little under uh, three inches gives you that, you know, a little under 3,000 feet per minute, which is, which is safe and does a good cut. So that's just how I've set mine up. I've been cutting like that since 1980. Works pretty well. Okay, so that now that we've talked about how fast the bandsaw blade goes, how to figure out that speed, let's talk a little bit about how it actually cuts. Okay, I use a three tooth per inch blade, just a half inch wide. Half inch seems to be a good size for this 14 inch bandsaw. Three teeth per inch seems to give me good clean out of the, of the dust and a, pretty, and a pretty good cut. 
Okay, on your bandsaw you gotta have rubber tires and the rubber tires are domed a little bit. And so that blade is supposed to ride right on the very top middle of that dome. And if it does, then that blade is going to be very parallel to your miter slot in your table and the fence that you set up. Now, I used to think you had to go and adjust your fence angle all the time to get that sweet spot where the blade would cut straight on down through the, the wood when you're resawing. Well, that's not really the right way. The right way that works much, much easier is to make sure your bandsaw blade is actually on the middle of that wheel. So when you're setting up your, your saw and you're setting up the, the, you know, the tilt of the wheel, just go ahead and get it till that blade is right there in the middle, bearing right there in the middle of the tire. And I tell you, you will get straight resaws. You won't have to be changing your fence at all. If you do find that your blade is wandering one way or the other, all you gotta do is adjust the tilt of the wheel with the adjustment in the back, and that's called tracking. And just change the blade where it sits on that tire a little bit because maybe you're not quite centered. And that works really well. I guess the other big thing about making your bandsaw work well is to keep these tires clean and in good shape. Now this is my second set of tires since I bought this saw, and I bought this saw in 1980. If you keep them clean, they last a long time. I use a little brush that I bought back in 1980. It's got some steel bristles surrounded by some plastic bristles. And I'll just, with the blade off, I'll just hold that under the tire and spin the wheel and get all that sawdust build up. So every time I change my blade, I do that. I also have a little brush here I use to clean out the guides and so forth. And uh, keeping it clean makes it work. As far as guides go, there's all kinds. I've got ball bearing guides on here. Uh, there's also cool blocks and steel blocks. Important thing is to make it so the blade is just not quite touching either guide. You want it to just to be kind of hanging in the middle of the guides. And as far as the thrust guide back here, you want the blade in at, you know, when it's not in the wood to not actually be touching that thrust guide. You want it to just when you put the wood, press the wood against the blade, it just pushes it back into the thrust guide a little bit. And that'll make your thrust guide last a lot longer when you're, you know, when you're not actually cutting. The most important thrust guide to have set correctly is the top one. That's the one doing most of the work, so just keep that in mind. Not that you want your bottom one to be off, but if your bottom one happens to be back even a little farther, you're not going to have a problem as long as this top one is doing its job. Finally, you want to have good dust collection on your bandsaw so you can keep all that dust away from the wheels so it doesn't build up. So I've got two kinds of dust collection on here. First of all, I have a fixture, and I can't even remember where I bought this. It's a sheet metal fixture that's designed, fits on a four inch pipe, goes to my dust collection system, and I'll talk about that someday in a, in a later Saturday in the woodworking shop. But it fits on here. And when I put the bottom shield cover on, it holds this in place. So this one takes the dust right off of the blade. But some of the dust gets down beyond the blade. So for that, I have my bottom wheel cover also has a big hole that I drilled in it. And I connected another four inch flexible tube to that. So any dust that gets down on the bottom of this wheel, and this is right at the bottom when that wheel starts to make the the, the bend and the dust goes flinging off, it'll get picked up by this bottom dust collector. And it works pretty darn good. When I take these wheels off to change blades, I'll find a little dust sitting down here in the, in the, in the uh, casting angles, you know, on the frame, but that's about it. Okay, so there I am. There I am, covers back on, ready to go. Hope these couple of minutes talking about the bandsaw will, will give you some tips that will help you. Mm -hmm.